The Learning House Museum is an example of an American Queen Anne style bungalow. Architect was Charles Christian Cook, the noted architect on the Eastern Seaboard at the turn of the century. The house itself has nine rooms, just under 4,000 square feet, and all the wood for the house is slow growth long leaf pine that was brought here from the state of Washington. The mantles, however, are quarter song oak. As you step into the house, you step into the world of arts and crafts. The delicate battles between arts and crafts and turn of the century Victorian style. And all the windows facing the street are beveled. We see the introduction of corner moldings and window seats for storage. An important feature of the house are the exterior shutters. Uh, they are all original and they are operated by interior cranks. Another feature that you will see in the living room is the experimental parlor grand piano made by Chickering and Son in 1866. A man bought that uh, from the people from Charleston and he took it to his home and then in 1905 the Lundies purchased this in anticipation of coming to their new home. It's experimental in that there were only 39 created and there are only 12 remaining. In the dining room, the mantel is quarter song oak and the tiles around the fireplace face are English. The furniture for the dining room is Empire Revival, purchased by the Lennies for the house when they moved in in September of 1909. Uh, the table has five leads, so 12 chairs. These are second generation chairs. This is why I purchased these sometime in the 30s and they're Flemish. Mrs. Lunny sat at the head of the table and had a floor buzzer that rang into the butler's pantry. And when plated food was to arrive, she pushed the buzzer and her personal maid and friend, Bertha Lee Strickland, would come through the pantry door. There was a master carpenter hired for the library. This was his only project in the house. He was paid five dollars a day, which was a fair amount of money in 1906, and regular carpenters were paid two fifty. What's unusual about this room is his treatment of the floor configuration and the crown molding. The crown molding is eleven layers of beautiful wood, and each of the dental pieces are single with two nails. In the kitchen is the arched ceiling. It's arched an inch and a half from each side toward a center vent. And as you open the door to the porch, in comes the fresh air and draws the smells and heats of the kitchen up through and to an ornate vent that you can see from the exterior of the house. The stove for the house is a 1910 quick baker. And the original was somewhat bigger, but it gives a feeling of the style. In the butler's pantry, we made a fine discovery, something you don't often find in restoration work. If you'll notice, there are pencil marks from the original carpenters showing where the cabinets and shelves were along the wall, and that's where the silver and china was placed. In our restoration work, we actually found an arts and crafts interior room. Uh, and at one point, I had found a stencil. Uh, up in the attic, I put it into an acid free sleeve and put it in the vault. And lo and behold, the stencil was the one that was original for this room. It's now mounted, 
We had a computerized stencil made to do the stencil about the room, but there is 18 inches of original uh, stencil still in existence.